Hello, and welcome to Accounting Information Systems. My name is Dr. Annette Moultrie. We will be discussing Chapter 3, which involves computer crime, fraud, and ethics. Again, this book is Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The contents from this video is taken from the book entitled Core Concepts of Accounting Information Systems, 13th edition. The authors are Mark Simkin, Jacob Rose, Carolyn Norman. After reviewing this video, you will be able to explain the difference between cybercrime and fraud, discuss the various components of the fraud triangle, list examples of cybercrime and fraud, as well as proper controls and procedures for pre preventing them. You also describe the profile of cybercriminals, and also we will discuss the importance of ethical behavior within the accounting information systems environment. Managers, accountants, and investors use computerized information to control valuable resources, sell products, authenticate accounting transactions, and make investment decisions. But the effectiveness of these activities is compromised when the underlying information is incorrect, incomplete, or falsified. This is why digital information is a valuable asset that must be protected the more managers and accountants know about cybercrime and fraud, the better they are able to assess risk and implement controls to protect organizational assets. In this video, I will discuss some, some common cybercrimes, frauds, and other irregularities in order to inform readers of them and viewers of the important threats to accounting information systems and firm resources. In the first section of this video, we will take a closer look at cybercrime and fraud and explain the difference between them. In the second section, we will examine three specific cases involving, involving cybercrime and fraud. And in the third section of this video, we will be able to show you actions organizations can undertake to protect themselves from cybercrime and fraud, that is, what they can do to recognize potential problems what, and what they can do to control them. Articles in Fortune, Business Week, Wall Street Journal, Computer World, Security Focus, and Wired all testify to the high level of public interest in computer crime. At, th at least three reputable organizations con conduct surveys that help us understand the breadth and the depth of cybercrime. First, the Computer Security Institute conducts an annual survey to help determine the scope of cybercrime in the United States. The respondents to this survey are computer security practitioners in US corporations, government agencies, financial institutions, medical institutions, and universities. Second, KPMG, which is a global network of professional firms providing audit, tax, and advisory services, they conduct surveys on fraud and business integrity. Survey participants are business professionals who work for one of the top 2,000 companies listed in Dunn and Bradstreet. Third, the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, an international professional organization committed to detecting, deterring, and preventing fraud and white collar crime, they conduct a biannual survey and publishes the results in its reports to the, to the nation on occupational fraud and abuse. The, the uh, participants in this survey are its members, each of whom provides detailed information on one occupational fraud case he or she had personally investigated within the past two years. Cybercrime. What exactly is cybercrime? Well, cybercrime is a general term that refers to any criminal activity that involves computers or networks. Cybercrime can involve direct attacks on computers or networks. 
using such methods as viruses or denial services attacks. Or cybercrime can employ computers or networks to commit a crime. Computers may be used, for example, to steal identities, harass an individual, or commit fraud. Here are just a few examples of cybercrime fraud or abuse. One, a graduate student infected a campus computer network with a virus that eventually disrupted over 10,000 different systems. The student did not realize how quickly the virus would get out of control. The second one, in a fit of resentment and anger, a data entry clerk shattered the screen of her computer with her shoe. Wow. Here's another. A programmer changed a program that calculated dividends paid to shareholders such that the dividends of selected stockholders were reduced and the remaining dividends were paid into an account owned by the programmer. The programmer was able to pay himself over $100,000 using this scheme. What about fraudulent financial reporting? Hmm. Fraudulent financial reporting, sometimes called cooking the books, so to speak, it occurs when corporate officials, such as a senior ranking executive, intentionally falsify accounting records to mislead analysts, creditors, or investors. Misappropriation of assets involves stealing assets from a company and is usually committed by employees within an organization or through collusion of employees and outside conspirators. The ACFE calls this type of crime occupational fraud and has developed a fraud tree to describe the many ways that employees can misappropriate assets from an organization. And we're gonna look at some examples. Cash, the type of fraud is larceny or skimming. It's a direct theft or removal from bank deposit, non-reporting or under-reporting of sales, write-offs of legitimate receivables and bad debts. What about inventory and all other assets? It's considered a misuse or a larceny fraud. An example is use of corporate limousine or jet for personal travel. Here's another one, fictitious inventory adjustments. These are just a few um, examples of asset misappropriation. Formal definitions of cybercrime and fraud can be found in law. Such definitions are important because they determine what law enforcement officials can prosecute as well as how statistics on crimes are accumulated. Now, both federal and state statutes govern cybercrime. The most important law is probably the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1986, which was amended in 1994 and 1996. This act defines cybercrime as any illegal act for which knowledge of computer technology is essential for its perpetration, perpetration, sorry, investigation or prosecution. The CFFAA, CFAA Fraudulent Act, it, un, it involves unauthorized theft, use, access, modification, copying, or destruction of software or data, theft of money, 
by altering computer records or the theft of computer time. Intent to illegally, to illegally obtain information or tangible property through the use of computers. Also, use or the conspiracy to use computer resources to commit a felony. Theft, vandalism, destruction of computer hardware. Trafficking in passwords or other login information for accessing a computer. Extortion that uses a computer system as a target. And there are other uh, legislation or laws that affect uh, computer crime. One is the Fair Credit Reporting Act of 1970. Uh, this act requires that um, an individual be informed why he or she is denied a credit. There's a Freedom of Information Act of 1970. It guarantees individuals the right to see any information gathered about them by federal agencies. And the list goes on. But these are just a few of them. Few of the uh, federal legislation affecting the use of computers. Now, every state now has at least one computer crime law. Most of the laws have provisions that, one, define computer terms, two, define some acts as misdemeanor, and three, declare other acts as felonies. These laws require willful intent for criminal convictions. Thus, words like maliciously, intentionally, or recklessly often appear in the wording of the computer crime law, and willful intent must be established for a successful prosecution. No one really knows how much is, uh, how much is lost each year as the result of cybercrime. One reason for this is the fact that a large proportion of cybercrime takes place in private companies, which it is handled as an internal matter. Despite our lack of complete statistics, there are several reasons why experts believe cybercrime is growing. One reason is the exponential growth in the use of computer resources, such as computer network, the internet, smart devices, and cloud systems. Another reason why experts believe cybercrime is growing is because of the continuing lax security. Now, there are numerous websites that give step-by-step -step instructions that detail how to commit cybercrimes. For example, there are thousands, thousands of websites out there that detail how to break into a computer system or even disable web servers. Cybercrime is perhaps the is perhaps best understood by studying uh, cases. Uh, crimes related to accounting systems often involve the falsification of data or unauthorized access to data and files. A major class of accounting related cybercrime involves illegal access to or misuse of the information stored in the accounting information systems. In the TRW credit data case, which is in the book, the information involved was credit data. Now TRW, which is called Experian, was, it is one of the large credit reporting companies in the United States. Uh, you have TransUnion, you have Equifax, and there's Experian. Now, clients of Experian or TRW included banks, retail stores, credit conscious concerns such as Diners Club, American Express, MasterCard, and Visa. And here we get into data diddling. Data diddling refers to changing data before, during, or after they are entered into the computer system. 
The change can delete, alter, or add important system data, especially the data stored in corporate databases. Now, this is a problem. And it's a problem because these data are often proprietary. It may give a firm a competitive advantage and possibly there are sometime, uh, sometime an organization most valuable assets. Now, again, this is a problem because these data are often proprietary. They may give a firm a competitive advantage and are sometimes an organization's most valuable asset. Another point involves protection of individuals' credit information and protection of the users of this credit information encompasses a much larger issue. In 1970, Congress passed the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which requires that an individual be told why or why he or she is denied credit. The consumer also has a right to contest the information maintained by the credit reporting company. Although there is clearly a vast difference between the right, the right to challenge versus the right to change the credit information. And we will um, continue with part two of chapter three in another video. Again, I would like to say that this, the content of uh, this video is taken from uh, the book entitled Core Concepts of Accounting Information Systems, 13th edition. Uh, the publisher is Wiley and Son. So in part two of the next video, I will discuss computer hacking, how to protect and prevent hacking of your system. Uh, also, we will discuss cybercrime and fraud, ethical issues, privacy, and identity theft.